so I've been getting a lot of interesting comments on my quaternion videos and so I want to clear up I want to use this video to clear up um, I guess my motivation for doing things the way I'm doing them okay so here's one comment I want to show you one comment so considering that you're working with the algebra and not simply handing it over to the matrix I would consider giving geometric algebra another chance okay so then here's another comment if you are going to keep making quaternion videos I really think it is in your best interest to give geometric algebra a try okay so here's the thing I, I've been doing things algebraically for the last uh, 20 years let's say since I've been doing computer graphics and 3d volumetric visualizations and other kinds of 3d visualizations uh, quaternion is in that code we use quaternions to do the rotations in those visualizations and um, they are generally done uh, using the you know geometric algebra so i'm not against geometric algebra the reason i'm doing things the way i am doing it using the matrices the four by four matrices is to gain insight okay so in this message uh, this person says uh, the matrix so I said I believe the matrix representation is more trans is the most transparent implementation because I can see exactly what's going on and so this person says the matrix rec representation is not the most transparent representation for quaternions and quite frankly it is clunky and obscures what's going on now I agree with this statement it is clunky it is clunky and I've said this many times I said this is not the most efficient it's not the most pretty I said the reason people in the past videos I said the reason people don't use two by or four by four matrices for quaternions is because they don't look pretty in a paper so I agree that they're clunky I always agreed with that they're 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 clunky but I don't agree that it obscures what's going on I think it actually exposes what's going on under the hood okay so this is why I want to make this video up to clear up um, for these people and for other people that might be reading these comments um, I do not have an objection to algebra to algebraic algebra what I do have a problem with is sometimes the symbolic language obscures the symbolic language obscures what's going on under the hood and so what I'm trying to do is unobscure it I'm trying to disambiguate I'm trying to disambiguate um, what quaternions are and when you implement quaternions as four by four matrices then you can clearly see what I J and K correspond to okay so when I um, put uh, the I, J, and K into the 4x4 four four matrix. You can clearly see a couple of things here. What you can see is that I, J, and K are constants. Okay, this is I in the 4x4 four four matrix form. Um, I in the 4x4 four four matrix form has a, in uh, using my convention, because I'm using row convention, so my matrices are row column convention okay so in my convention uh, I has a positive one here and a negative one here and a negative one here and a positive one here and minus I would then have a negative one here a positive one here a positive one here and a negative one here and that would be referred to as the complex conjugate of I okay J is a constant it is a constant it is a unit it is a unit rotation okay so J has a positive one here positive one here negative one here negative one here and minus J would have a negative negative positive positive okay and that would be to consider the complex conjugate of J and, and K of course needless to say but I'm gonna say it anyways K is a constant uh, four by four matrix with positive one negative one positive one negative one here all the values in these matrices are real and ponderable numbers okay you uh, for the i j and k because these are units they only contain ones in the matrix 
okay so um, I don't see how this obscures anything what this does is it exposes something it exposes uh, the fact that the um, 1 I J and K are the units of quaternions uh, they it um, there are no I J and K letters symbols okay the problem I'm having is with the symbolic language and I think the symbolic language can confuse people more than this um, this uh, method here where everything can be seen where everything is exposed it's like opening the curtain and there you have the quaternions this is what it looks like under the hood so here is another more extended conversation that I'm having with this person here and this is a, a much longer conversation right it's got um, 20 replies back and forth and so I'm not going to get into all of them but the main argument that's going on in this conversation has to do with um, with the uh, terms that we're using so basically he says here so he said when he called them units I objected which is true but he was referring to them as orthogonal direction units and I was referring to them I refer to them as um, unit rotations and so um, the problems with the language when you use the word unit it can mean many things it can mean uh, unit vector it can mean a unit rotation and so um, so he was a uh, I had objected previously to the the use of the term unit but I believe he was referring to I J and K as orthogonal direction units and I am referring to them as unit rotations okay so then he comes back and he says he tries to tell me that they are ortho orthogonal vectors and not rotations unless you mul multiply them together okay unless you apply them okay and this is also not true um, as you can see from um, from here uh, these are the I J and K are four by four matrices you can't say that they're not four by four matrices and four by four matrices are not vectors vectors tend to be uh, one by four or you know like basically columns or rows vectors in a 3d cartesian coordinate systems and this is what we're talking about is 3d and maybe even 4d cartesian coordinate systems um, the vectors are usually <clears throat> a column or a row of a vector and not a uh, square vector like this okay so um so this person says is trying to tell me that i j and k are orthogonal vectors and I'm trying to say that they're not and then he goes on to say that he said you're confused and mistaken um, they are in no sense operators so I J and K are operators okay they are operators and that's what they're for they are rotation operators and I uh, am not the one that's confused so I come back with I think you're the one that's confused I can prove with simple computer code that what I'm saying is correct and accurate can you and if so show me the computer program that proves that you're not the one that is confused okay and so he comes back with it's not possible to share code in a YouTube comment uh, and then he says uh, if you have I J and K which are orthogonal but they're not they are orthogonal but they're not orthogonal vectors then they are vectors he said if you have i j and k which are orthogonal then they are vectors and not rotations which is not true except that they are orthogony ro rotated from one to another if you want to think of it that way well i don't actually want to think of it that way i want to think of the x y and z directions as orthogonal and i want to think of the i j and k as rotations okay or as as um, transformation matrices okay they are the matrices that we use to perform rotations in a 3d coordinate system okay then he goes on to say if you add 2i plus 3i and you get 5i this is linear no rotation happens no what you are doing here so you're treating 2i and 3i as vectors okay and you get uh, 5i but here is how i do it uh, using matrices 
so here is an online app that does matrix edition okay so i already had this set up so on the left here we have uh, the equivalent matrix equivalent of 2i okay so i has uh, opposite sense uh, i occupies the backward diagonal and uh, the entries have opposite sense so um, two times i would look like this in the uh, two by two rotation matrix of the complex numbers okay three times i would look like this okay you just take the three so let me just go like this so i okay this is i this is i in the two by two matrix uh, form of complex numbers okay i is uh, has ones in the backward diagonal and they have opposite sense this is a rotation matrix. This is a 90 degree rotation in the XY plane, plane about an imaginary Z axis, which is in, into and out of the plane. Okay, so this would be, uh, this would correspond to a 90, 90 degree rotation in, in the complex plane, in a two dimensional plane, X and Y, two dimensional plane. Okay, so now three times I looks like this three times i so two times i two i looks like this three i looks like this and when you add them together you get a two by two matrix with fives on the backward diagonal and this corresponds to five i okay so if you add two i plus three i you get five i um, and so basically what you're doing is you're creating a new rotation matrix okay so this is 2i and 3i are rotation matrices and when you add them together you get another uh, rotation uh, matrix okay so so this statement here does not prove anything because it's not proved um, that i j and k are orthogonal uh, matrices and here is an example of when you write things algebraically you might be the one that is confused okay so um, 2i is a rotation matrix 3i is a rotation matrix and when you add them together you get 5i which is another rotation matrix okay so this basically proves my point it doesn't um, go uh, get away from my point or it doesn't disprove my point okay Okay, then he goes on to say, you can keep saying whatever and you'll still be confused. No, I'm not the one that's confused, but that's okay. Uh, numerical matrix is not an operator. It is a vector. No, it's not. You can multiply orthogonal vectors to produce rotations. No, you can multiply vectors by rotation matrices to rotate a vector. Okay, that is basically what's going on under the hood. You're taking a rotation, taking a a directional vector when you take a directional vector and you rotate it by a rotation matrix that directional vector gets rotated okay you don't um, multiply vectors by vectors you multiply vectors by rotation matrices to get rotations and I can prove that in my code that's what I do in my code and I've given you all my code so you can um, you can scrutinize it as well and anyways, I'm not going to read this whole um, thread. I'm not going to go through this whole thread. You can go through it if you want to. Uh, you can find it on my video, on this video here, the problem with quaternions. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to uh, read you something that I got from the ChatGPT. I asked ChatGPT a few questions and um, it cleared things up uh, quite nicely. So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, so here is the question I asked. Uh, would you agree with me if I said that i, j, and k are not direction vectors, but instead are rotation operators? And it comes back with, yes, I would agree with you. The components i, j, and k in quaternion algebra are more accurately described as rotation operators than as direction vectors. Let's uh, break down why this interpretation is more appropriate. Okay, quaternions and rotations. So the mathematical definition, quaternions are expressed as Q equals A plus BI plus CJ 
plus d k where i j and k are the imaginary units okay i j and k are unit rotations in my opinion the multiplication rules for i j and k as we know are i squared equals j squared equals k squared equals i j k equals minus one and they define the algebraic structure of quaternions and are the foundational of how uh, to how uh, they encode rotations okay the role in rotations in the context of rotations i j and k are not merely components along the x y and z axis but rather elements that contribute to the transformation properties of the quaternions so quaternions are transformations okay this is very important they correspond to specific 90 degree rotations around their respective axis when used in quaternion multiplication. So I corresponds to a 90 degree rotation around the X axis. J corresponds to a 90 degree rotation around the Y axis. And K corresponds to a 90 degree rotation around the Z axis, just as I've been saying all along. Operators in quaternion algebra. I, J, and K operate within the quaternion algebra to modify vectors. So quaternions operate on vectors and other quaternions through multiplication, effectively performing rotation operations. Their role is intrinsic to how quaternions rotate vectors in 3D space. For instance, the application of I in a quaternion operation can be seen as applying a transformation consistent with the 90 degree rotation about the X axis, as I've been saying all along. Distinction from direction vectors. Okay, vectors versus rotation operators. Vectors in 3D space are typically understood as entities with magnitude and direction that represent points or directions in space. So sometimes points like coordinates in a 3D coordinate system are represented by vectors where you have an arrow from the origin to the point and they represent them as vectors, okay? I don't really like that, but that's how it's uh, typically done. Ro rotation operators like I, J, and K in quaternions defined how a rotation is applied to these vectors, not just pointing in specific directions, but altering the orientation according to the quaternion multiplication rules. Okay, so action on vectors. When quaternion, quaternions are used to rotate vectors, okay, quaternions are used to rotate vectors, the quaternion a plus bi plus cj plus dk acts as a whole um, a whole to transform sorry acts as a whole to transform the vector through this operator here and this is what i showed you in my code where you have a quaternion you multiply the point by the quaternion and then you would multiply quaternion the complex conjugate by the um, output of this uh, operation here here and you end up with the complete rotation. And so uh, I showed you this in a, in a few videos back where you need both, you need to put, um, set up the quaternion with the half angle here, and then you multiply your uh, point by that, and then you multiply the output of that by the complex conjugate, and that's how you get the complete rotation. Okay, so we can, we can talk about that again another time, but uh, that's not the point of this discussion. The components I, J, and K are instrumental in defining this transformation, but are not, not acting as mere directional indicators. They contribute to the rotation operation by defining how the vector components are altered. So quaternions alter the vector. They are not the vector. Okay, quaternions are not the vector. And this is the point I'm trying to make um, with these people who are more familiar with vector algebra and less familiar with this uh, matrix uh, form of quaternions, they don't seem to get that uh, i, j, and k are not vectors, even though there is a huge body of um, papers, of descriptions in, from the past that do describe i, j, and k as vectors. But here you can clearly see that uh, they are rotations, they are transformations, quaternions, transform vectors, they are not the vector in of themselves. Okay, so intrinsic nature, <clears throat> excuse me. 
I, J, and K are intrinsic to the algebraic structure of quaternions. They encode rotational properties rather than direct, uh, just directional information, and their multiplication properties are what make quaternions effective at, re at representing 3D rotations. Okay, then it talks about the practical applications in computer science, which I've been doing for uh, my entire adult life. So I am familiar with how quaternions are used to rotate things in 3D space and um, the, how the quaternion multiplication is responsible for these rotations. Okay, so therefore, in conclusion, therefore, it is more precise and less confusing, in my opinion, so it's not more confusing to do it algebraically uh, or do it uh, using the 4x4 four four matrix. It's less confusing, in my opinion, because it led me to the understanding that I, J, and K are rotation operators within the quaternion algebra. They fundamentally define how rotations are applied and combined rather than simply serving as direction vectors. They're not direction vectors. This perspective aligns better with their mathematical properties and their application in 3D rotation scenarios. Okay, so um, ChatGPT is very good at wording things. So I think this, the way that ChatGPT worded this is much better than that conversation I was trying to have with that person on my YouTube channel. Okay, this really specif really um, specs it out very clearly and in words that make sense. And so this is uh, what I wanted to accomplish today. Okay, I want to make it very clear that um, the reason I am using the 4x4 matrix and or promoting the 4x4 matrix version of quaternions as opposed to the algebraic um, in, uh, symbolic language is to gain insight. And this is the insight that I gained. I could not see this by looking at the algebra, by the symbolic lang language of algebra. I could only see this clearly when I mapped it out into the 4x4 four four matrix form. Okay, so that's uh, that was all my goal for today. Uh, here you've got, um, so if you take, you get the um, A times one plus B times I plus C times J plus D times G by multiplying uh, the, the components of the vector. So A, A, B, C, and D are the vector. Okay, A, B, C, and D are the vector. A is the scalar in the, X in the A direction. B is the scalar in the B direction. C is the scalar in the C direction. And D is the scalar in, in the D direction. Okay, and when you multiply the scalar A by the, um, by the two by two matrix, the identity matrix, you get this matrix here. And when, when you multiply the scalar B by the I matrix, you get this matrix here. And when you multiply C the scalar by the J matrix, you get this matrix here. And when you, when you multiply D the scalar by the K matrix, you get this matrix here. And when you add all these matrices together, you get this general quaternion in four by four matrix form. Okay, now I know it sounds like I'm flogging a dead horse, but I'm still arguing with people on my YouTube channel. So I, because of that, I, think I still need to um, to get this out there. I, th I think I still need to do more um, videos on this so that other people aren't confused by those conversations. Okay, so uh, that's all I'm going to do for today. I'm at the cabin right now and so um, I think it's a good idea that I go for a walk on the beach. So you guys have a great day and we'll talk soon. Bye.